In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the Microsoft Outlook calendar so we can schedule different events for our friends, Jen and Charlie, who run the YouTube channel, Lost Renegades, they're always having events going on, so we have to help them schedule those events for the next month, and we're gonna create an awesome calendar like this one. To start using the Outlook calendar features, we have to click on the calendar icon here in the taskbar. So we'll just click on that. And then what we're gonna do first is create a calendar folder, which is really great because you can create new calendars and you can select multiple calendars within that calendar folder but first we have to get started by creating this folder so we have to go to the folder tab within this calendar view and then click new calendar now their YouTube name again is called Lost Renegade so that's what we'll call it and then make sure that it says the folder that contains calendar items and calendar is chosen so we'll press OK and then you can see the Lost Renegades calendar folder that we've created. So we'll unselect our default calendar and we'll choose the Lost Renegades calendar folder. Just make sure that's the only calendar folder that's selected and then we can start adding some events. When you're scheduling events in your Outlook calendar, the first thing I would do is, it doesn't matter whether it's an event next week or an event next year, go to the Go To button here in the Go To group in the Outlook ribbon and that's gonna allow us to quickly select a date instead of having to like scroll through a monthly calendar. Uh, just say, click the go to button here and then you can choose a date right from there. So we're gonna choose Jen and Charlie's first one-time event. We're gonna choose that one. That is for February 14th. So that one is here and we can press okay. And now it takes us to that day. Now we have to uh, click new appointment. So appointment and events are the same thing. So we'll choose new appointment and we'll title this one the Van Roof live stream. Now Jen and Charlie are using mountain time so we want to select time zones. They are about two hours earlier than eastern time so they would be kind of right at the top. The, the more west you go the more like towards the top of the outlook time zone window the more east you go would be towards the bottom so they're time would be mountain time right here. They're gonna live stream for about two hours so uh, and it's make sure it says, yeah, they're not gonna be doing that at 7 a.m. They're gonna be doing that at 7 p.m. So make sure you got the right uh, time of day. So 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Monday, February 14th. Okay, so that's their next live stream and the location is the top of the van. Okay, so once we've got that all set up, don't forget to press save and close and that's gonna keep the calendar item or the event uh, in our calendar. And that's great, so this is a one-time event. Now we're gonna create Jen and Charlie's first recurring event in our calendar, and that's going to be uh, Movies Under the Stars on every Saturday night. So they're gonna do movie reviews on top of all of their live streams and van adventures. So on every Saturday night in February. So we have to plan that out. Uh, we're going to, we'll start with the first one. So we've missed the February 5th, but we'll start these on February the 12th and then make it like a recurring event. So every Saturday in February. So we'll say, we'll click again. I just did it this quickly by clicking on the first date that I saw here, February 12th. I'll type in the title, Movies. So Movies Under the Stars, that's their movie review day. And another thing when you're doing an Outlook event, uh, you can also set the reminder time. So do you, if you want a reminder 15 minutes before or maybe a little bit earlier, like two hours. So let's say uh, to remind them to post the video every week, we're gonna uh, create a reminder every two hours before the event. So just to let them know, hey, you gotta upload this video, your fans are kind of expecting it. So we're gonna create a recurring event, so it's gonna happen every Saturday at the same time. So now that we've got the main details in there, we can click Recurrence. And we've got tons of options here. We can do like a monthly one, uh, you can do a weekly one, which we want, and we've already chosen Saturday, which is great. So Recur, you could do twice a week. Uh, recur every other week would be every two weeks. So if you did every other week, you'd say every two. Uh, we're going to do every week and then we're going to end by the, they've got July. So <laughs> maybe they just want to kind of experiment this with just the month of February. So we're just going to put that as the last date and by now, if you had no, you might have no end date. So if this was like ongoing thing that you had and you're not sure when the end date is, you could put no end date as well or end after how many occurrences. That's another way to do that. Um, so we've got the start date, which is February 12th, the end date, February 26th, and we'll click OK. And now we can, we can save and close that one. All right. And also with recurring events, if something pops up 
and you want to delete something within the list of recurring events, you can also just uh, delete here and just make sure that you're deleting the occurrence, not the series. So maybe you have like one night where you're just like, we just can't make it that night. Um, you want to delete the occurrence. You don't have to delete the whole series. So just delete occurrence and that would remove that one time event, recurring event, but it wouldn't remove the whole series. So just keep that in mind. If you ever, if something comes up, life gets in the way, that's how you could remove one event and not the whole series. Now to improve this calendar visually, we're going to categorize some of the events because right now there's not a lot of separation between what events are. There's different festivals they've got going on. They've got live streams and they've also got classes and different kind of events during the month. So we want to categorize these different events so it's easy to spot the different kinds of events that they've got going on this month. First one we're going to do is the live streams and because they have to record these live streams we're going to uh, color this in red so I'm going to choose the first live stream here actually the first one's here February 10th and then give them a the red category and just do that for all of the live streams so I'll just go to the next one. For festivals we'll put this in a blue category so we'll do a blue category, or maybe, yeah, let's do a purple category. Sure, why not? <laughs> all right, we'll do purple for that, all the festivals that they've got going on. So if you see a festival, we're going to categorize that in the purple category. Okay, so now this is a little bit easier to read because you can see that the live streams stand out in red, the festivals are in purple, the classes that they have are in blue, and the Movie reviews are in green, so we kind of, this just makes it easier to categorize different events if you've got a lot going on. You can actually get a little preview of what the weather is going to be like in a certain area, so that's great, especially if you're Jen and Charlie and you're filming a lot outside. You want to know if the weather's going to be nice over the next few days, and uh, for some reason it doesn't show up in Toronto, Canada, but if you choose anywhere in the States, if you're creating a calendar for something like that, you could also switch the kind of weather preview. So we're going to say that uh, Jen and Charlie are traveling around Phoenix, Arizona in the next few days. And that's great because it looks nice and sunny and no precipitation at all. So they're able to film with no uh, no delays. So that's great. That's just something you can add. It's it's really great feature because if you're scheduling something, you might want to know, you know, can we do events outside and things like that, especially for events. Now this next skill, you would see it on an industry standard outlook exam. So it's really important to pay attention to this one and how to complete this kind of challenging task. So Jen and Charlie next month, the first Friday of next month, they're going away to Hawaii and they start off by, take, they take off in Chicago, but then they land in Hawaii. So how would you adjust for those time zones? That's very tricky and I'm gonna show you how to do that. So the first thing we have to do is click on, we're gonna say go to, and then I'm, look what you can do. I, this is how you can use plain language. This is a really cool feature in Outlook. And uh, this is how you do that. So you'd say first, Friday in March, press enter, and it comes up. So that's really great, especially if you have like, maybe it's the first Friday next year, that would be a really quick way to get to that point in the calendar. So March 4th, Jen and Charlie are leaving for Hawaii. We're going to create that appointment and then trip. Okay, so this one, we've got the date correct here. Uh, it's gonna land on the same day, obviously, because it's a flight, so we'll say, we should say flight to Hawaii, but trip to Hawaii works. And we're going to start that off at 6 a.m. It's like that, like that take a long time usually would start off early. And then time zone would be central time. Scroll up if you're in Easter time like me, you just gotta scroll up a little bit, central time. And then they land, it's, it's 9 a.m. but it's not three hours later because it's Hawaii time, so get to Hawaii time, you have to scroll all the way up the top again. We're going really far west. That's in Hawaii time. And uh, you see that when we click here, it's actually a seven hour flight from Chicago. So that, so yeah, if you're ever flying across time zones, that's a really advanced skill uh, if you're creating that kind of appointment, but it is also an industry standard skill. So if you want your Microsoft official Outlook Associate certificate, this is a good skill to know. Now I kind of glossed over that plain language feature in Microsoft Outlook in the last step, but it's one of the coolest features in Microsoft Outlook. So I'm gonna show you why and how to use that. So I would use it if you have to really schedule things really quickly that are far away, maybe a year from now, 
And let's say uh, Jen and Charlie both have dentist appointments in the first Friday of next year, so 2023. How would you do that really quickly using plain language? Let me show you. So we'll go to the go to tab again. I'll pull that up and I'll just type in first. This is so cool. First Friday of next year and then press OK. And it goes right to that date. So I don't have to like scroll through monthly uh, calendars, all that. I just type first Friday of next year. And that's really cool. There's a bunch of things you can do with that. You could do like tomorrow, today, you could, when you're setting up calendars and just use plain language. I could do a whole video on that, but uh, I'll just create that appointment now and uh, maybe I'll save that for later. So uh, and then we'll create like a dentist appointment or something like that. Sure, 7 a.m., saving clothes and that kind of thing. So there you go. That's a really quick way to create appointments and events using plain language. We've completed our calendar and we want to send it off to Jen and Charlie who need this calendar. So we're going to save it and I'll show you what they would do on their end if they want to import the calendar file. So we're going to save a calendar file and then they're going to import it onto their Microsoft Outlook. So this is how we do that. Make sure you've got the calendar selected here and then press file and then save calendar. It's going to save like an I, what is it called? An I calendar format file and you can choose like if you choose more options, you can actually choose the date here. So if you do the whole calendar, you could do that or the next 30 days, or you could specify the dates too. So we'll just say the next 30 days because we kind of did a monthly calendar for them mostly. Um, there were a few dates in there, but they probably don't need those right away. So we'll just say over the next 30 days and that would actually include the trip to Hawaii. So that's good. So, uh, and then we'll press okay. And then we've got the Lost Renegades calendar. I'm going to save it into my documents folder and then I can send that off to them. So, and if you were receiving a calendar, you all you have to do is go to the open and export, import and export. And then you've got some options here, the iCalendar options. So then import an iCalendar file and then it would pretty much just uh, give them the exact calendar that we just created. And uh, that's how you would do that. So. Um, yeah, that's how you'd import the calendar. But there's something I left out. We didn't really go over how to schedule meetings. So I'm going to do that in the video that you see on your screen. Make sure to click that one so you don't miss a thing on how to schedule meetings. And I'll see you in that one. Bye for now.